dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him, and always, say always, always, always day and night he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, verse 9, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Oh. <clears throat> The devil knows how to draw you, part five, the devil, part two. So neighbor, over these next few sessions, we're going to be talking about the devil. And so if you're scared of him, you better not turn in, right? But you should, so you need to know what's going on. Uh, people love to talk about angels, but it's a real devil, and it's some real demons <laughs> here in this world. Not on the movies of the Martians, no, they really around. Notice this, the Lord went over to Gadaria, where Legion, a devil-possessed madman, a devil-possessed madman, a devil-possessed madman, well, among the tombs. Have you ever noticed how witchcraft and their occult ceremonies and things of that nature are conducted in the shadows, in the cemeteries among the dead? Darkness rather than light is what the devil loves. This madman dwelling in the tombs not only cut himself, but plucked off with the strength of many demons, the demons that were in his soul, the chains that bound him. And the devil said unto him, There he is, that's Jesus. He's come to destroy you ahead of your time. Legion went racing out, but the man called Jesus did not run. Jesus had come there on business. Deliverance for a soul possessed with thousands of devils. Through Legion, the devils were saying, Why have you come to torment me, torment me before the time? It isn't judgment day yet. Very much aware that Jesus had the power to send them to hell, the demons began to beg, let us go into the swine. They knew if they asked to enter another person, the request would be denied. Upon being cast out, demons seek to enter wherever is available. And this is the thing that we teach here in our ministry. Because we believe the whole Bible. And when people come up for prayer, especially on Friday night, and places sanctified unto the Lord, people are seeking healing, they tell people, you better be quiet. You better have your mind on the Lord, because when people come up for prayer, those devils or evil spirits or sick spirits, those demons, when those people cry from their heart, those devils leave, but they're looking for a, a viable candidate. And that's important to think about. 
that when he, after they are cast out, again, demons seek to enter wherever is available. They don't want to go into an animal, but they will if nothing else is open. Satan knows how to draw you part five the devil part two. He don't want to go into an animal or a dog, cat, bird, lion, bear, but he will if nothing else is open to you. And we're going to talk, maybe not today, about the different forms that the devil takes. Has had Jesus not allowed the demons to enter the swine, there would have been no great manifestation of the devil. And yet, in spite of that great manifestation, some theologians will deny today that devils were cast out in the manner that the Bible talks about. A huge herd of pigs, however, knew something was wrong. They ran for water and drowned themselves because of the demons. At least one demon entered each pig. And I'm sure that we find in the fifth chapter of Mark the number of the swine was about 2,000. Did the demons as well as the swine drown? No, I wish they had. But water does not stop devils, only the fire of God. As you go on and read the whole story of Legion, you will think about what a sight he must have been. His hair was matted. It was dirt caked, unwashed, he was filthy, and wild-eyed demons like Satan himself. Glam, think about glaring into his eyes. But when the people from the city came out, they found Legion. What was he? He was clothed and in his right mind, sitting next to Jesus. Did they appreciate the fact that somebody they knew was no longer tormented? No longer sick? Throughout the synoptic gospels, as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see where the church, for the most part, rose up because Jesus performed a miracle on a day and in a way they didn't like. Forget about the fact the person was made well. So many of our churches have turned into amphitheaters and uh, theatrics and entertainment centers. And so when people hear these messages, it's so they are alarmed and, and they feel as if we're not speaking the word of God. But it is the word of God. It's just foreign to your ears because you're not being taught right. That's right. The devils are real. Right? Yes. Think about him again. His hair was matted. He was dirt caked, unwashed, filthy, and went wild eyed demons like Satan himself, glaring through his eyes. But when the people again from the city came out, they found Legion clothed in his right mind, sitting next to Jesus. Did they appreciate it? No, all they could say was, you have lost our pigs, and they ran into the water. There are many who love pigs better than they love souls. Instead of rejoicing that the man was delivered and he could go home back to his family, he was in his right mind, the townspeople wanted nothing to do with the miracle of God. And in this final hour, with that attitude, you will blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Yes. Right? You might not understand what happens in our church, but we got the real thing. <laughs> if you don't see a healing or a miracle, then you don't have to come back. But don't mock what's going on because you lack understanding. Don't go back to your house and sit away and talk on the phone. You need to tell people, I, I, I ain't speaking on that. Amen. Anything about the church, I, I can't speak on that for your own sake. Yes, because you never know when you might be in need of a miracle. Amen. So don't talk yourself out of a healing or a miracle. Amen. Right? Come on. Amen. Amen. And we know that people will come to the ministry and maybe you watching us on YouTube and you'll see someone get a miracle and you'll sit up there and you'll mock and laugh. It's a dangerous thing. Right? Steps to blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. That's the one sin that you'll never be forgiven of in this world or the next. So think about that. Instead of rejoicing that he had been delivered, they wanted, they wanted him to get out of town. They just want him to get out of town and didn't want to have anything to do with the miracles of God. What a testimony it was. Before Legion was delivered, I am so sure that even his family was frightened to death of him. And 
just to see him now. Think about all the prayers that have been solicited for him. Think of all the hours the mom, the sister, maybe he had children. Just crying out. People ask them the story about their dad. They, they can't even, they don't even want to get in. They don't even want to get into what's going on. They just say he's not home. Right? We do that. We, we do that when we talk about different ones. Even though my son Daniel was shot down, people ask me how many kids I got. I say five. Right? We always talk about that one that succeed, but them other baby ones, it, people think we only got one child. We got five, but the rest of them ain't working toward being nothing. So what do we have? What 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 do we have to talk about? And it's in everybody's family. Yes. Right? He was clothed, he cleaned up, and he was clear minded. It must have been truly marvelous indeed. When Legion was delivered, he wanted his clothes. People who display their bodies today in lasciviousness are devil possessed. Yes, they are. Yes. Not too long ago, Flash was popular, and then it came mooning. All of it is devil possession. Public nude beaches are becoming more and more common. You see, the devil wants you to dishonor your body to do anything to make the temple of God dirty. But this is what Jesus had to say about demon possession and the backsliding. Matthew 12, 43 through 45. When an unclean spirit is gone out of man, that means you receive the blood of Jesus on your soul. He walking through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Then he said, I will return to my house from whence I came. I want to see if you got the blood there. Are you living for Jesus with your whole heart? He said, and when he is come, he found it empty, swept, and garnished. No Jesus in there. Then coming he and take away himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So the Lord saves you. He cast those devils out of your soul. You got to get Jesus in. Not only do you have to get Jesus in, but you got to live your life for him. No works of the flesh as recorded in Galatians, the fifth chapter. No works as recorded in uh, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, the third and the fourth chapters. No works of the flesh as recorded in the book of Romans, period. But first, want that first chapter. Having to be attitudes. Can you live that life? Then, uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter, the Beatitudes, the book of love, Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Can you, live, can you live that? Can you live that? Can you live that? Then you are a child of God. Right? Jesus was describing a man who had been delivered. The devils had gone out of him. Although for a time this man resisted evil, he didn't really commit his life into God's hands the way he should have. That's something for you to think about. The devil came back, found his house empty, right? You cannot leave your house empty, unguarded by the whole, unguarded by the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to chaperone your soul. You didn't get that. A chaperone is someone who goes who watches over you. You need the Holy Spirit to chaperone your soul. Oh, I like that. When we were coming up, when I was in high school, we had uh, dances once a month. We had to have chaperones. Right? Because some of them devils, when that light went down, <laughs> for if Jesus neglected, the devil will return with reinforcements to take over. A person delivered from demonic power, from devil possession, he must wholeheartedly live for the Lord. You got to give your heart complete to the Lord. Ephesians the sixth chapter talks about the hour that we now live in. The power of darkness is so strong you can't be playing no games. Yo, man, oh my God, you can't afford to get it in jeopardy. You don't want a reprobate man, the unsaved man, an unruly man, a man that can't be reasoned with, or he will suffer the same fate as this man Jesus is talking about. Think about somebody who backslid on the Lord. Think about 
a demon-possessed backslider was in a service which was conducted by our home church. It was the church of another minister. After the altar call, this man was down on the floor. Some Christians gathered, thinking him to be under the power of God, struggling as hard as he could to get up from the floor. This big, strong man was bound by demons until he was like a serpent, a ser serpent in his movements. The crowd around him were praising God. But that pastor said, I moved some of them out of the way and commanded, come out, you foul devils. People looked at one another. They were so confused because people don't know the spirit of God from the spirit of the devils. They giving the spirit of the devil praise and saying that the spirit of God is fanaticism. They giving the devil praise and saying that the spirit of God is too hard. They getting devil praise and saying nobody can live free from sin when they walk in the purity and the holiness and the righteousness of God. And they hate those who live holy and walk upright. But Satan knows how to draw you. Right? thought something was of God and it was of the devil. Yes. I was in this church once and I believe the Lord had sent me there to uh, hold me there while the other pastor out that I was soon fellowship with was giving me some prayer. And we had a service one day and I learned a lot from this church. They can have church all night and still go to work the next day. If I ain't learned nothing else, I learned that. They can sing one song for five hours and never, they never get a palpitation. So this one night we were at church and this man sat in the back. And of course I didn't know anything, you know, like the Lord has taught me up until this time. But I knew someone, right? So this man sat in the back of the church with his head down. So it was that time when the pastor was and other people. He was jumping up, running all around, screaming and stuff. So finally, the attention was drawn to this man with his head down. So instantly, people thought he was a prophet. He, he came up and rapped with some words, and people thought that it was of God, but it wasn't. And I'm just giving you that example for you to see how people are so acceptable of just entertainment, fanaticism. And black people, they, they so emotional, and they so... Um, they just so bouncy, I guess I can say. <laughs> we got soul, we think we super bad. But, did you get that? <laughs> but we gotta be careful. We, we tend to gravitate toward things that have the appearance of God, but God's not in it. Right? But think about how alcoholics, alcoholics, that's a person who drinks constantly, they are devil possessed. Think about that. Many homes are wrecked today because of the devil, because of devil possession. Daddy, he'll come in, he'll beat the children, abuse the wife, making their lives a living hell on earth. It's devil possession. Those on alcohol and on drugs are devil possessed, affected in the soul, the mind, and the body. Devil exists for one purpose, to destroy your soul. The body the mind deteriorates as alcoholics seep into rages and hallucinations. And all the time, those demons, they are crying for more alcohol, torturing in the soul, in spirit. They possess until they cannot rest. They cannot sleep. They cannot do anything until they give that devil what he wants. It's the same thing with sex. It's the same thing with drugs. You know, that alcoholic ain't getting no peace till he get more alcohol in him to, ain't, to satisfy that devil. Right? Amen. By satisfying that thirst, they satisfy the demons, but it's only for a short time. It's only for a short time. My pastor says he has witnessed many, many alcoholics set free, and he heard their stories. He said, I remember a man delivering one of my services who was amazed to learn how many devils were in him. How did I get those devils, he asked. Suddenly, the Spirit of God took me over and through the gift of knowledge, God took me back into his life. The Lord said, you were drunk. Yes, you were drunk and the devils came in and possessed you. You gave your mind and your body over to alcohol. You were rendered helpless, lying out on the ground. 
you put yourself in that senseless condition. And by doing so, you open up to demon possession. Yeah. The devil's moved in. That's something to think about. You on alcohol, you on drugs, you, those are devils. They are in your soul. They are in your soul. You have leeches, leeches on your mind. And think about it, when you are on drugs and when you do alcohol, you are out of your mind. People want to, they look up trying to escape. They want to feel good. And that enemy comes right in when you just at the, you at the highest point. You just don't want to think about life. And then they move right in. And you can feel, you can feel that strangeness. Something is different about you, but you don't know what. Some demons that moved in. Now you, you hate the things you used to love. Devil possession is real. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yes. And God wants the devil uncovered. God wants the devil uncovered. Yes. And if you live with an alcoholic, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. A, a trash your car, kill you, kill 15 other people. And then when they come to themselves, then just like Judas has said, the devil into him. Right? Because he was jealous. Right? Something to think about. Devil possession is real. It's real. Many have been taken over by demons while they were under the influence of alcohol or drugs. When you lose control of your senses, remember this. Your man, there is another power ready to take you over. It's a destructive power, a degrading evil power. It's the power of Satan. It's called demonology. I believe the alcoholics who die and go to hell, they still have a thirst. But only it's worse. And they will never be able to quench it. I believe the desires of the flesh that caused them to sacrifice their souls would torture them day and night in hell. There would be no satisfying any of them. Think what an alcoholic is like when he can't get a drink. And multiply that many times. It would be the same. It would be the same for a drug addict. It would be the same for a sex offender. It's going to be the same for a murderer. Part of the torment of hell. Those that were in whoredom will desire sex, but they'll have no way to fulfill that desire. There will be no satisfaction, only torment, torment, torment. People possessed with a murdering devil will crave to murder or beg, but, excuse me, they will be unable to kill anyone in a constant frenzy of frustration that can never be satisfied. They'll be possessed with lust to kill, to kill, 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 and destroy, but they can't. The only way they found relief when they were on earth, it, it was doing what that devil wanted them to do. If you don't remember nothing else, Satan knows how to draw you part five, the devil part two. He is real. He loves people who are petty. He loves hurt feelings. He loves when people are jealous. He loves those who are immature. He loves people who cry. They feel self-justified. He loves the teenager that wants to move, the rebellious teen that wants to move from home. He loves the uh, married couple that ain't being intimate. He loves it all. He loves it all. He loves it all. I want to tell you about one wolf demon today before we leave. Satan knows how to draw you part five, the devil part two. Wolf demons. Demons come in different forms, and we will be talking about that. Take your name and tell your friend. Dealing with satanic power, over the years, our pastor said, he began to recognize it in different forms. He says here, I remember one woman who had deceived others and was playing the hypocrite. Uh -oh. Sound like a warning to me. Be who you are. Be who you say you are. Notice this. I want you to take heart. You know what book I'm in. You know what book I'm in. I'm there anyway. I've been talking to you. <laughs> wrong with me? You know what book I'm in. You know it. You know it. I remember he says, it was one woman who, de who decided, I'm sorry, who deceived others and was playing a hypocrite. Not a few 
few devils had entered, but many, many. Now she wanted to be delivered, and I told her how deceived she was, how disgusting in the eyes of God. God had even numbered the devils that possessed her soul. I prayed for her, and when those devils came out, they were in the form of wolves. Suddenly it was a madhouse. Demons surrounded her, snarling, growling, their tongue flicking out as they struggled to get back into her soul. They were limited in how close they could come to us. However, it was as though we had a circle of blood around Christ around us, and he was protecting us. Indeed, we were protected by the blood. I have never witnessed anything like those demons. To be frank, I had no idea what was really going to happen. I just knew I was free and God was with me. Those demons had come out and God wouldn't let them go back in unless the woman wanted them. If she didn't really mean business, you come up into this prayer line and you're not serious, they would enter back in. I knew she was doomed never to find God again. It was her last chance, and I fought with everything in me. I used every bit of faith in the blood of Jesus I possessed. Suddenly, the power of God just wiped the wolf demons out as though they had never been. Deliverance had come through the power that's in the blood. You will never know how many times I have relived that experience. Even to tell it now, he says, affects me. I see them over and over again. Imagine a pack of wolves circling you. And I have had people who walk down with us tell me they, they can see uh, demons marching around them, marching around their mind. They can see them. They can hear them talking to them. And people who are never possessed see demons and they, they can hear voices. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right. He says, I see them over and over again. Imagine a pack of wolves circling you, snarling as their long, slobering tongue darts out. That's really something to think about. I'm going to close with that today. I do want to tell you what a demon looks like if I can get that reach another man book. And I thank the Lord for uh, each and every one of you today. And I don't want you to be afraid, but I do believe that it's knowledge that you need to have. And another one of my books, reach another man. But I want to describe to you what a demon looks like. Satan wants to draw you from that the devil part two. Let's see here. And demons are seen again through those who are devil possessed, but also through the gift of discernment. Demons are not imaginary. They are real. They have features. And our pastor says, and I believe it, that he can see them just as he can see another person standing in front of him. Looking into a soul and actually seeing the devils that possess that person. He said, I see their eyes, their ears, and their teeth. It is the most terrible sight I have ever viewed in my life. I just groaned from my innermost being. I sighed the scene is unspeakable, really cruel. Can such a terrible sight be visualized without actually seeing it? Some visions are given for a purpose. It's for the deliverance of souls. I don't want him to read this, but he talks about um, how they have the head the size of a man. And they're snarling, they're snarling teeth. And I would sneer out at you. That's just really something for all of us to think about. But we'll continue this great series, and I will be back with uh, a more of an explanation. But I think that's good. Maybe the devil knows how to draw you part by. Yes. Yes.
door, they can get in your animals, they can make your lights flick on and off. They can, uh, I witnessed them knocking on the door when I was sitting down. They knocked on my car. They have called my name. They really, they really does. And neighbor, I want you to think today, some of you know you have devils in your soul too. As you try to stop it, you don't have no power. The only power is in the blood. But I want to pray for you now. I'm not a healer. Jesus is the healer. And I believe with my whole heart, if you are sincere, that the Lord will move for you. And I'm going to ask everybody in this great congregation, we're going to stand and we're going to all pray together. And I want you to re repeat this prayer with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. We'll be drawn on the Lord to help you today. And I want you to say, Oh, God! Oh, God. Rejoice in the Lord together. And I'll see you next time. God bless.